someone's crying. Um, yes? Um, where are you? You took the phone. Uh, Please don't. You need to fear from this damn line of Frankfurt. I thought I heard up here in the attics. What? I'm probably just imagining things. Dear Mrs. Bailey, I'm so sorry I haven't written to you before, but everything this year has happened in such a whirl that I'm afraid I haven't been very good at things like that. I hope you weren't too disappointed that I didn't take up that scholarship to the School of Music. I certainly didn't dream when I went to the music festival that I'd end up marrying one of the sponsors. But I'm sure you understand. Charles didn't want to wait, particularly as we found this lovely Georgian house. I'm afraid I haven't been practicing absolutely regularly. Oh, no, I'd better not tell her that. Um, I mean to start practicing again every day once we've bought the baby grand that Charles has promised me. We're buying lots of things at the moment. It's such fun. Please remember me to Miss Lord and Miss Parsons and to any of the girls from my year who stayed on. Tell them I do sometimes miss them, rather. Or are you just browsing? Oh, I was just looking. That's a nice chair, isn't it? Art Deco, a very good little piece. Mm. Oh, I see you're looking at the basketwork cradle, aren't you? Isn't it a beauty? Oh, yes, it's lovely. And you've got it so nicely arranged, too, with the patchwork quilt and those flowers. Ah, in the antiques business, a lot of skills in that sort of thing. Oh, I'm Sandra, by the way. I'm Anne. You're not in the trade yourself, I suppose. No. no. Well, I mustn't give away too many professional tricks, must I? <laughs> Would you be interested in the cradle? Um, I might be. I'm not sure. Perhaps not just yet. It's just that I've been admiring it each time I come past. I live just up the road, you see, in the knight's house. The big white house? Oh, lucky you. Mm. Wasn't it a school once? I've never heard that. Well, you see those two little desks there? Yes. When I bought them off the old boy living behind the pub, there were lots of exercise books in them with Knight's House School in them. Oh. In fact, I think they're still in there. Yes, look at them. I really must throw them out. Oh, let me see. Might a museum be interested? Oh, they're not old enough to be interesting, surely. Hmm... Trade winds, long division in pounds, shillings and pence. I ask you, they look just like the sort of ghastly rubbish we were taught when I was at school. And I'm not that old. Mm -hmm. But why don't you take them home and look at them, if you like? Go on, do. I'll find you a plastic bag. Oh, thank you. Caroline Brown, lower 5A, botany, geography, English composition... Summer Town, 1953. Doesn't look much like English composition, though. It's some sort of diary. Like this, I'll be able to write with nobody noticing, even when horrible Miss Blake's taking prep. Miss Blake's taking padding prep, round with padding round with calves. bulging calves. She doesn't check up whether you're actually writing about why Florence Nightingale was important for England, or whatever. It isn't twelve weeks of term ahead. I've just worked it out. It's thirteen. Oh, how will I bear it? But that's silly and babyish for someone of fifteen. Nearly fifteen and a half. I know that, really. I will bear it, just because I will. And I'm trying to remind myself this is always the worst time, the beginning of term. Even when the holidays before, with poor old Gran and Auntie Joyce, haven't been anything special. You can't be completely happy for a whole holiday, just thinking how glad you are to be free to walk down the street. May the 5th. Haddock for lunch, which was beastly, with a sort of leathery skin from being kept warm. Drill in the hall, because it rained. Blakey made Vanessa P keep on and on trying to get over the jumping horse, which she can't, till Vanessa began to cry. Miss Blake told her she ought to have more spunk. What is spunk? It sounds dirty, but it can't be if Blakey says it. Then Nasty Squit began whispering in Vanessa's ear, Fatty, mother's baby, your ma's fat too, ooh. 
Oh, thank God I'm not fat. And I haven't got a mother anyway for people like Squit to be spiteful about. Charles? Are you awake? That's what woke me. Charles, Charles, oh, hold on to me. Darling girl, what is it? I'm a few doing down here. You're cold. Have you been out in the garden? The garden's not there. <laughs> of course it's there. You silly little thing. But I looked through the big window on the landing, and I couldn't see the moon there at all. Instead, there was a great tall building right next to this one. The lawn, the new rose beds, they'd all gone. But look, 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 they, they haven't gone. How could they? And so I came down here to the hall to get the key and go out through the garden door. But it was open already. And it wasn't the garden on the other side of it. <sighs> Darling, you've been sleepwalking. Come, come back to that, sweetheart. Come on. Go on, sleepyhead. Nice cup of tea. Mm. Thank you. Charles, hmm. do you ever dream that the place you're living in is different? Sorry, what? Different. With a bit of the house you, you didn't know was there. Well, I told you before I don't dream very much. Well, I'd like some, I could mention. You've got too lively an imagination, now. should relax a moment. It was like, like that time we went backstage at Covent Garden after Traviata. Suddenly, it was like being in a different place, with a cold stone corridor and fire buckets and smelling of disinfectant. Oh. Does this, uh, does this tie really go, this shirt, do you think? Yes. Yeah. Oh, Common Garden, that reminds me. Have you booked for really let her in March, as I suggested? Yes, I have. Good girl. Oh, uh, I didn't tell you, didn't I? I'm going to be in Frankfurt for most of the week before. Yes? That means I'll be all alone here. Oh, don't be silly. Love it. So you for three days. Have a nice rest. No dinner to cook. I like cooking dinner. Have you uh, seen my briefcase anywhere? By the study door, I think. Charles? Yes, what is it? I've got to be off. I've got an early meeting. About the opera. I, I just thought, you did say we might invite Mum and Daddy to the opera sometime. Well, I could wait till the summer, couldn't you? We could take them to Glyndebourne. Mm. Hmm? Or... Mm, maybe not. Um, oh, we do something with them. Okay, well, listen, um, 
Bless you, Charles. Bye. Charles? Yes? You did lock the garden door last night, didn't you? Oh, for God's sake, Anne. May the 15th. Bar Belgrove's doing Keats with us in literary appreciation. St. Agnes Eve. Listen to the sensuous imagery, girls. Poor old Bar. Some of the girls say she had a fiancé who was killed in the Great War. I wonder if he used to kiss her. I do wonder what it's like being kissed. I do wish I had someone to kiss me. I don't think I would mind being shut up here so much if people weren't always trying to make out all the time you're in the wrong. Staff say things like, talking before the second tea bell is sounded, disgraceful, go and stand in the corridor. But it's the girls too, ganging up on each other, just to keep their end up and talking about taking so-and-so down a peg. Sometimes I think I haven't any more pegs to go, that I'm lying here all limp at the bottom of somewhere, like that junior did last summer. And she hit her head on the bottom of the water tank. She was lying quite still under the slimy green water. The games mistress we had then, before Blakey, jumped in and grabbed her. The kid never came back after that term. Nor did that games mistress. Hello, Sandra. Hello. I hope you'd call in again. This is Mrs. Neal, a very good customer of mine. Oh, hello, my dear. Hello. You don't know who I am, do you? But I know you. You're one half of the couple who bought the old school, aren't you? <laughs> I caught a glimpse of you the other day when I was walking the dog. You were standing in that big arched window looking down on the garden just like a Botticelli angel. Oh. Like, <laughs> with your lovely long hair. Oh, she does. You're quite right. I thought that myself as soon as you came <laughs> in. I'm such an old crock myself. I still call your house the old school. Well, you see, it was called that when Huey and I first arrived in the village. But I'm going back more than 30 years now. Why did it stop being a school, I wonder? Well, I, I do remember hearing some story, some sort of drama that had taken place. Now, what was it? My memory these days. Was it a girl falling off a fire escape? Yes, I think it was something like that. And, of course, all the parents took their children away. Gosh! Well, well I expect it would have shut down anyway. It was probably one of those silly little private boarding schools dedicated to turning girls into young ladies. <laughs> Not at all the parents want today. And anyway, girls today wouldn't stand for it. I <laughs> know my granddaughters wouldn't. Well, why should they? Good morning. I'll be with you in a tick. Do look round. I know that pair. They're dealers. I'd better go and sort them out. <laughs> <laughs> yes. My dear, it's so nice to see that whole house done up again. Mm. And with the right window frames, too. You and your husband obviously know what you're doing. Oh, Charles knows lots about houses and furniture and things. It's, it's, it's quite a large place for a young couple to take on. Oh, he's a lot older than me. But you're very young. I thought your generation was supposed to be marrying later than we all did. Actually, Mum and Daddy did think it was old-fashioned of me. So did my friends. <laughs> Still, it's nice to start your family early while you've got lots of energy. Oh, I'm, I'm not sure that Charles... We'll have to see. Of course. You must come to tea, dear, if you can spare the time. I don't give dinner parties these days since my husband died. But I've got some nice old prints of the village and your house is in one of them. Oh, I'd love to. It can be a bit lonely when you're first married. I do remember. It's only when Charles is away the house feels too big. I do wander round in it rather on my own. Of course, the place used to be a lot bigger. Bigger? How? Oh, well, you see, there were all those other buildings there. Well, you've got that lovely garden now. A whole block in that sort of very red brick. It was hideous. Huey and I were very glad to see it knocked down and the original house restored. Sunday. I keep trying to work out ways of getting more time on my own. The other night, there was a bright moon, and I crept out onto the top of the fire escape, long after lights out, when all the others had gone to sleep. It was nice out there, but cold in pyjamas, and a bit weird with nothing under you but air. So today, I've locked myself in the lavvy, the one that's been called the dungeon ever since Squit and Mo Mowbray locked a junior in there one Sunday, and nobody found her all day. 
everyone else is at him practice. If I can get time to think more about life and things that matter, this diary might be more grown up. Oh, I do wish I was grown up now. I must get a grip on myself. Mar Belgrave, who's much worse than Bar, says that to girls who've been caught doing underhand, deceitful things, like hiding in the lavvy, I expect, instead of going to him practice. Or wriggling through that hole in the hedge at the back of the vegetable garden. Yes. And going out of bounds and down the field behind. It's worked. I slipped away right after evening meal, and everyone else was in a scrum round the jam cupboard. So now I'm sitting on the stile, right at the bottom of the field, where a little stream runs, writing this. I've never been this far before. It feels exciting and queer. The sun's going down. And it's a little shivery, but not too much. The white hawthorn is in flower. Over a plank bridge, there's a lane, and I'd love to explore it further. But I'd better wait till next time. I want to make sure that no one misses me. Not stay in this horrible hole. Someone might come. Someone's crying. It's what I heard before. It's up here on the top floor. I'm sure something terrible's happened here once. I'm sure it has. June third. Something real has happened at last. My life is utterly changed. He said he'd be here at quarter past seven. It's eight minutes past now. He works at the woodyard and gets off at six, but he has to go home first to have what he calls his tea to stop his mum fussing. Jamie's his name. He's Scottish. Well, he was born up there, and has aunts living there where he goes for holidays. He's a bit taller than me, and very solid, with reddish brown hair and freckles and lovely square boy's hands. He's shy, until you start talking to him. I think that's one of the reasons we took to each other, both being shy. The very first time he came riding his bike down the lane, I saw him from a long way off, and he saw me. Sitting on the stile, we both just stared at each other as we got closer and closer, and neither of us knew whether to say hello or not. Then he was right close to me on my stile. We both said it at once, and then both smiled. Charles. Yeah. You know that nice little antique shop the other end of the village? Uh, no, I think I do. Not, well, not unless you mean that shop full of moth-eaten lace. It's called uh, Time Remembered. Yes, that is its name. Run by that fat hippie. Most of her stuff's hardly antiques, darling. Has she's got this really nice basketwork cradle? Darling, and people like her just trade in popular sentiment. They're overpriced as hat. You mean the tarot cards next, or organic vegetables? Thank you. Now, what I really seriously want to buy for you next is that baby grand. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. There, nice cup of tea. You look as if you could do with it, rather. Oh, thank you, Sandra. Not pregnant, are you, darling? No, I'm not. What I wanted to ask you was, did you choose the name of this shop yourself? Actually, it was thought up by a great friend of mine, very brilliant person. He said that name would make people feel they were buying a little piece of the past they sort of remembered, or thought they might remember. You mean something that once happened to them? Yeah, that's or... right. He was very into that sort of thing. Well, so am I, of course. Mm. Oh God! I've just seen another leak in the ceiling in that corner by the chaise longue. Oh dear! That bloody builder! I've just given him another fifty quid too. No. No, 
I shall rise above it. I'm very into meditation, too. Oh, really? Um, what exactly was the first thing you said you were into about people feeling they could remember things? Oh, you know, darling, past lives. Well, it's got to be true, hasn't it? Simply bound to be that we're all recycled, I mean. After all, where else would everybody go? We can't meet every evening. Some of the time I ought to be seen around after evening meal, so that people don't get too suspicious. In French today, Mamselle asked me a question, and I didn't hear. And she said, Caroline, where are you, my child? Miles away, wool gathering. And for an insane moment, I wanted to say, oh yes, Mamselle, excuse me, I was. Miles away. Well, a good half a mile anyway. In a little beechwood off the lane at the bottom of the field. And a boy has just kissed me for the first time. Vous comprenez? And it's as if I felt him with me ever since. All last night and all today. So strange and lovely and different from anything I've ever felt before. Dear Mrs. Neal, thank you so much for the other day. I really enjoyed looking at the prints and that old map. To think that the Knight's House land once stretched right over where the housing estate is now and down to the lane. Well, we can't abolish the estate, but I'm glad you like the way we've got the house and the garden looking now. Only, sometimes, when it's dark, I feel that the school buildings are still there too. Not the Knight's House, but the night time house, because it's only there at night, standing very close to this house. It's full of stairs and corridors, and there seem to be people there. Oh, I can't say that. She'll think I'm mad. Dear Mrs. Neal, thank you so much for the other day. June the 20th. After breakfast today, Squit was making a big to-do about a letter she said she had from a boy and then giggling and hiding it in her bra. She said, look at snooty Caroline pretending she's not jealous. She wouldn't know what to do with a boyfriend if she had one. I feel I'm leading two different lives, so separate from each other, that I'm not the same person. When I squeeze through the hole in the hedge and run down the side of the field, Often he's there already, half invisible, under the trees, waiting for me. Hello, dear. Oh, hello, Mrs. Neal. I didn't see you. Won't you come into the garden? How lovely your polyanthus look. What a show. Thank you for your little note. I'm afraid it probably sounded a bit silly. Not at all. Some buildings do have strong personalities, don't they? Oh, what lovely spring weather we're having, aren't we? My dear, you really should get away for a night or two. Have a little break. So well, I don't think... Charles is awfully busy at work, you see. Hmm, I see. Actually, I'm glad you're here. There's something else I've been wanting to ask you. How do you find out about what's happened before in a place? Like this house, I mean. No. Let me see. I think you'd have to go to the local history library in Wickham. Hugh used to spend a lot of time there after he retired. The thing is, I'm not sure if it's something long enough ago to be history. Well, I know you, you could try the local paper, but... My dear, don't spend too much time thinking about your house, will you? You should be getting out more, seeing friends your own age. It was really hot and thundery last night, and he took his shirt off. He looked so nice. I didn't take mine off, because of what the magazines say about no nice girl wants to and so on. And then one day you get married, and it's all completely different apparently. But none of that feels as if it has anything to do with Jamie, who's just himself and special. If he had asked me to take my top off...
Exams are starting this week. Ma Belgrave said we should pray to God for success. I do wonder about that rather. I mean, poor old God. At least revising is a good cover for my being out for hours on my own, since everyone thinks I'm a snooty swat anyway. Oh, thank God that November, when Jamie has to go into the army to do his national service, is so far off. But in another two weeks, term will end. Oh, I never could have imagined when it began that I wouldn't want it to be over. Nearly eight weeks with him here and me in Wiltshire. He wants to come down to Chippenham by train some Sundays. If only I can manage to get away from Gran and, and Auntie Joyce for whole afternoons to meet him. I must have a plan. Charles. Hmm. While you're away again next week, I might pop up to Lichfield for a couple of days. See Mum and Daddy and my old teacher. Really? Well, if you must, I'd really rather you didn't. Why? Why? <laughs> I should have thought that was obvious. A house is a natural target for burglars. Well, that's why I've arranged a professional house sitter when we go to Monte Carlo in August. But I can't have one just because you take it into your head to pop up north for a couple of days. No, I see that. Anyway, darling, come on, you've worked so hard on the garden. Don't you want to enjoy it now the fine weather's here? Dear Mrs Bailey, thank you for your nice letter. It was lovely hearing about the end of term concert. Of course, I would love to see you all again and hear everyone's news, but I'm not sure when I can make it. There's always such a lot to see to here. I do rather wish I had a friend from school living near, but there's no one. I'm trying to practice now regularly, like you suggest. I find it rather hard not having something to practice for, but I'm sure in a little while I'll be able to. September the fourteenth. At last, I'm back. All the school smells and noises are the same, the same forever. But I don't care. We'll be able to meet often again. I thought the summer holidays would never end. Those afternoons we managed to spend together were so short, and all the rest so long. All those days and days alone inside my own head, waiting for it to be the next Sunday or the one after. I kept going for long walks. Auntie Joyce thought it was my age, and gave me a book called Gateway to Womanhood, mostly about keeping your underclothes dainty. She suggested I join the tennis club. Oh dear, she couldn't possibly have dreamt that four of my walks led to Jamie, Jamie arriving with his bike on the station platform. Now. Those seem the only real days of the whole summer. September the seventeenth, his dear face. I was afraid for a few minutes, going down the field again, that what we did together in the bracken above that railway line in Wiltshire might have changed things, but it hasn't, not one bit. You're so important to me, he said last night. I think the world of you. Excuse me.、Uh, I、yeah. rang this morning about coming to look at um back numbers. Well, what year? We've got volumes and volumes in the basement downstairs. Can I help you? What's you looking for? Um. Oh, that's kind of you. I、uh, I'm looking for an accident. Um, at a school, I think. A, a fatal one, perhaps. Um. Oh, more than thirty years ago. Well, that's all I know. Well, we don't have a proper cuttings library here. I was a bit surprised to find out on a Saturday last month, but there's some old brown folders of undated cuttings in the back door with cheerful things like murder and fatal accident on the labels. Oh, that sounds just right. Oh dear, I didn't mean it quite like that. <laughs> That's all right. As journalists talk too, nothing like a nice murder. <coughs> I'll take you down there and get the folders out for you. This way. Thank you. October the seventh. 
exactly one month now before his national service starts. They've told him to report to Catterick. That's in Yorkshire. October the fifteenth. Getting cold, and the leaves are going fast from the trees in our wood now. So little time in the evenings. So little time left at all. We'll have to manage something. But how? How? I think about it all the time. October the twenty-ninth. We have a plan. Oh, Jamie, how brave you are! But we have to wait till December, when I shall be sixteen. Otherwise, when the police catch up with us, they could put Jamie in prison. So, for the moment, he's going into the army. They won't send him to Cyprus or Aden or anywhere at once. They don't, he says. So he'll be able to run away and come and find me. We fixed a date, December the twelfth, four days after my birthday. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yes, Charles. What is it? This dust on his little French clock in the hall again. I've told you how valuable it is and how delicate. Oh no! But if you can't make Mrs. Thingy do her work better, we shall have to get another cleaner. Oh dear! October the thirty-first. Our last evening. It was almost dark and raining, and we just clung together in our clothes. I go over and over the plans for December the twelfth in my mind. I will slip away again immediately after evening meal, and then change into my own clothes in the lavvy, and leave by the fire escape and the gate onto the road. I'll walk quickly to the station. There are several evening trains, Jamie says, and he'll be waiting for me in Paddington under the clock. Then we'll get the tube across London to Euston, and get the night express to Scotland and Gretna Green. We can get married there right away, Jamie says. People do. And then we'll go and stay with his aunt Minnie and his aunt Jeanie in Cree Town. His aunts are nice, he says, and will understand. I did cry rather a lot the days after we said goodbye. Squit noticed and was horrible as usual. Blakey asked me in a smarmy way if my period was coming on. It isn't. I don't care about any of them now. Here you are, and a letter for you. Don't people know how to address envelopes these days? For the attention of Anne, the Knight's house. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Dear Anne, I'm sorry. I don't know your full name. I should have asked you that time you came into our office. I think I may have found what you were looking for. I've enclosed a photocopy of a report about an incident which happened at the school during the time this diary was written. Jim's lit tragedy, suicide denied. Miss Mildred Belgrove, headmistress of the Knights House School in Old Kingsdown, said this week that there was no truth in a rumour that had been circulating regarding the accidental death of one of the pupils. It was a tragic accident. In future, the door to the fire escape will be kept locked. No other member of staff was available for comment. Oh, that's awful! I knew that something terrible had happened here. I knew it. It's the nighttime house. It's there all the time, even when I don't see it. December the fourth. In four days more, I'll be sixteen. It's awfully cold now. Some of the radiators aren't working, and the food seems more disgusting than ever. When Jamie and I are married, we'll have a nice warm place to ourselves, and I'll cook him things he likes. Irish stew's his favourite, he says. I'll soon learn to make that. I suppose that while he's still in the army, I'll have to stay with his aunts. But he said that would be all right. That they'd look after me, and if I have a baby there, that'll be all right, because I'll be married, and that's what people expect you to do when you're married. 
He'll love me forever. He said so. I keep remembering that. Oh, I do wish he could write me little letters like he did in the summer. Just a sentence or two. But I had to tell him not to here, because all our letters are read by Mar Belgrove. Only another eight days now, and he'll be waiting for me at Paddington Station. That's the end of the diary. Or the exercise book, anyway. But I don't believe it. I don't believe she ever met him at Paddington. Oh, maybe he meant to come, or sort of meant to. But Yorkshire's a long way. He was in the army in uniform. Could he escape really? And could she? Even if she did get out of the school and went to the station, wouldn't those Belgrove ladies soon notice that she'd gone and ring the police? I don't think they ever made it to Gretna Green and got married just like that. It would be too neat. Real life never works out exactly as you dream it will. And if that newspaper cutting is about Caroline, then the real end of the story was quite different. They told me I couldn't possibly keep the baby. I was much too young. Everyone said much better for it to be given a good home by people who can care for it properly. Miss Belgrove and her sister are most good in being prepared to take you back in the school once this nasty business is all over. I never saw the baby. I heard it cry, and then they took it away. They said it was better like that. Put it all behind you, my dear. Don't even think about it. Deceitful and immoral, Caroline Brown. I hope you're thoroughly ashamed of yourself. You should pray to God. No, I shan't pray. What for, anyway? Not to care any longer. To forget. I'm so tired of everything, and so sad. Sadder than I ever knew was possible. And so lonely. <gasps> sorry, I didn't realise we were just going to cross over. Oh no, it was my fault. I wasn't looking. I'm sorry. It, it is you. I, I thought it was. I recognise your long braid. Hello. Oh, hello. It's you. Uh, the paper's given me some time off to explore the district, so I thought I'm I'd. Uh... Sorry, I stepped out in front of you. I was miles away. I was going to visit a friend. She owns the antique shop down there. If it's open. She isn't always there, but I do need to talk to her. Are you all right? No. Oh,、uh, did you get the cutting I sent you? Yes, I did. Sorry, I should have said thank you. Actually, that was why I wanted to talk to Sandra. She she understands about some things I don't. Why don't we go and have a drink at the pub over there? I've never been in the pub. We could sit at one of those tables outside on the grass. Why not? Where the hell do you think you've been?、Oh. How do you think I feel? The one time I come home early, drive past my wife drinking outside a pub、oh, with a stranger. Don't bother to explain. If you want to run around with local tow rags, you of all people might damn well have the decency to do it when I'm not around to witness it. Charles. <sighs> Dear Charles, this is to let you know I'm going away. I don't know where you are, and I'm scared here on my own. This afternoon I went up to the attics. It's very lonely up there and cold, and I'm frightened of something terrible happening. Oh no, I can't say that. Charles, is that you, Charles? It's me, Justin. Um. Is it all right to talk? Oh, Justin, yes, yes, quite all right. You're alone. Actually, I've been alone here for two days. Are you all right? 
You sound a bit... I'm all right now. But thank you for asking. I was just wondering. It's a fine evening. I was thinking of riding down your way again. Oh. You know the housing estate at the back of your garden? Uh-huh. There's a lane beyond it that runs down to a little wood. Yes. I, I explored there the other day. There's an old style there, isn't there? Yeah. Yeah, yes. there's the one. I, I know it, Justin. It's just beyond the oak tree. Yeah. Fine. I, I'll, I'll see you there. Dear Charles, I have tried writing this to you in the house, and I can't. So I am now, um, somewhere else, sitting on a stile. I'm really sorry, but I can't go on living like this. Not in the night's house. I shall go straight to the station from here, get the evening train to London and go and spend a few days with Mum and Daddy. I wonder if that's true. I think I may be away for much longer. Charles, I'm really sorry about this. If I was a bit older, and we were going to have some children, then I might feel differently about it. Together, we might be able to change the way the house feels and... other things. I have tried, but I don't think you want me, it, us, to change. But I want to change. It's a lovely evening. I can smell the hawthorn flower. The place has changed. Of course it has. Places do. But I'm almost certain this was where she used to meet him. And now, all these years later... It's me. Caroline couldn't escape, but I can. I have to. Here's someone coming. On a bike. He said he might come. Is it him, Jamie? Oh, no, it's Justin, of course. A few moments more, and I'll be able to see him clearly. In The Night House by Gillian Tyndall, Anne was played by Helen Shields, Caroline by Helen Weaver, and Charles by John Telfer. Mrs. Neal was Faith Kent, Sandra, Susie Fugel, and Justin Jonathan Bonner. The play was recorded on location in Bristol, with special thanks to the staff and girls of Badminton School. It was directed by Sarah Davis.